let's start our session guys so i have divided my presentation into three main parts uh, first of all i'll talk about the basics of osint second we'll look at osint investigation process and finally we'll share some useful resources uh, and tools that will be helpful in your online investigation and this session will take about 60 minutes and there will be a plenty of time for questions at the end of my presentation. And the screen is visible, guys. Sorry, I didn't ask. The screen is visible, the online basics. Oh, sorry, yes. OSIP basics. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for confirming. Great. So let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. Oh, my my course is not working. Okay. So my name is Afshan Nafvi, and I'm currently working as an OSINT analyst for an Israeli firm. Alongside uh, my work as an analyst, I also work as a part-time instructor at SOC Experts and SecureZ.io, where I get the opportunity to share my knowledge with you guys, okay, in the cybersecurity field. Additionally, I run a YouTube channel called AFS Hackers Academy, uh, where I create content related to various aspects of technology. And recently, I've been accepted into this AWS Community Builder program, uh, which will allow me to expand my knowledge and skills uh, related to cloud computing and share my expertise with others in the community. So this is a very short introduction about me. Now let's see the agenda of today's session. First of all, we'll talk about what is OSINT and who uses OSINT because that is more important. Second, we'll talk about the offensive and defensive side of the OSINT. Okay, Vinayak, we'll answer this question later, okay? You guys have plenty of time to ask question at the end, okay? Next, we'll talk about the, what are the career exists in OSINT. And we'll, go, uh, we'll also talk about the OSINT investigation process. And this thing I have added yesterday, you know, the important points to consider before starting the OSINT investigation. And lastly, we'll share, sorry, next we'll uh, see the scenario, like how to investigate an email. And finally, we'll share some resources that will be really helpful in your OSINT investigation. So let's see what is OSINT. So OSINT stands for the Open Source Intelligence, uh, which is a way of finding and analyzing information that is publicly available. Uh, think of it as a detective, uh, detective work uh, using information that is already out there for anyone to see. Uh, this can include things like news articles, social media posts, government records, and other publicly available sources. OSINT is important uh, because it can help us make better decision and understand what's happening in the world around us. So for example, uh, law enforcement might use OSINT to track down a criminal or the criminal activity. Or a journalist might use OSINT to investigate a story. So it can be used to monitor trends and patterns in public opinion or behavior. So it is important, basically it's important to remember that gathering and using this information raises important ethical and legal questions about privacy, uh, data protection and information security. So it is important to use OSINT responsibly and with respect for others, privacy, other people's privacy. Okay, Raghuvendra, how does OSINT incorporated in ASM tools for risk prioritization? ASM full form, can you provide? And yes, we'll, we'll cover the careers aspect in OSINT, okay? Uh, Raghuvendra. Okay, now, now let's see who uses OSINT. First, law enforcement agencies, uh, they used OSINT uh, to gather intelligence on criminal activities, uh, including cyber crimes. Next, government agencies 
uh, used, used OSINT to monitor and analyze foreign and domestic threats, uh, as well as to gather intelligence on geopolitical events. We know our government spying on us, obviously, so they use OSINT tools basically. Number three is military organization. Military organization use OSINT to gather intelligence on potential threats and to monitor geopolitical events that could impact the national security. So that is also important. Next, we have the private, uh, private investigator. Like if you go on Fiverr, you guys can see a lot of uh, private investigator are willing to work for you. Uh, they basically find information about the companies or you know the background check types. So you guys can check out their services on Fiverr. And yes, this organization gather information on individuals or organization for legal or business purpose. Next, we have journalists. Journalists use uh, OSINT to gather information for investigative reports or to fact check scenarios or stories. So obviously journalists also used OSINT Lastly, we as a cybersecurity professional, we used uh, OSIN to gather intelligence on potential cyber threats and to monitor for data breaches and other security incidents. Overall, OSIN is used by anyone who needs to gather information from publicly available sources to support their work or research. So everyone can use OSINT. Now, Let's see the offensive and defensive side of the OSINT. Basically, these are the two distinct approach to using OSINT or open source intelligence in investigation purpose or operation. External attack surface management. Okay, Raghavendra, so we'll, we'll uh, like we mostly use Multigo. We'll talk about Multigo. What kind of OSINT tools used mostly? We'll share, guys. We'll share. We'll share the tools and resources list so that you guys will uh, do your online online investigation. So offensive. Okay, offensive OSINT involve using publicly available information. Uh, to gather intelligence on a target uh, with the intent to exploit that information for some gain, uh, like the attacker use this uh, techniques. Uh, it may involve collecting sensitive or confidential information about individuals, organizations, or governments. Examples of offensive OSINs include cyber attacks, uh, you know, the gathering information about a target's network infrastructure or security protocols, and vulnerabilities in order to exploit them. Social engineering, obviously it's a part of OSINT. Uh, so we gather information about the target interest, uh, preferences or personal information to manipulate them into revealing sensitive information or taking a specific action. Corporate espionage. Uh, obviously uh, we gather a lot of information about our competitors, okay, like what's going on in their team, like what are the product they are launching? What are the services they are launching? So we use OSINT uh, to gain these information or for our competitive advantage, basically. Next is our defensive OSINT. Uh, defensive OSINTs involve using publicly available information to identify and mitigate potential risk to an organization security, reputation or assets. Basically, defenders defend the organization. Uh, so examples of defensive OSINTs include threat intelligence, uh, monitoring online forums, uh, social media, and other sources to identify potential threats to an organization's operation or asset. Uh, obviously, as a threat intelligence analyst, you have to work on or you have to collect different intelligence, different information from different sources. Next, incident response. Uh, using OSINT, we can gather information about a security breach or other incident to understand the extent of the damage and identify uh, the potential culprits. 
So we use OSINT in our incident response uh, stage. Due, uh, due diligence, uh, we use OSINT investigation to evaluate the reputation and track records uh, of potential business partners, vendors, or employees. We basically conduct the OSINT investigation on these people uh, before, before entering into the relationship with them. Like, obviously, when we are uh, make, when we are you know dealing with these people, when we are making deal uh, in, in blue team. So obviously we have to check their background, what are the vendors they have, employees, partners, and their relationship with each other. Defensive OSINT. So these are the two sides, offensive and defensive. I like the offensive side of the OSINT. Uh, so that is the reason I love social engineering, by the way. You guys have, if you if you have my if you have watched my previous webinar on security, so it is related to social engineering. I love, by the way, I love social engineering. 